we went in her room. And when we went in her room, we realized how much, how bad of a job the feds did shaking the spot. You know what I'm saying? Because we might have looked under the bed, in between the bed, in the drawers, and all that. And now, we just gathering stuff, right? We ended up with a, an abundance of everything. You feel me? I'm talking about grandma had, grandma had it in, fool. She had everything in there, but straight up. You know everybody, you know my whole The whole team. Yeah. 100. 100. BB. Double salute. I be outside Wild life 100. Wild life 100. Me. I've been in the trap every day. I don't get much sleep. I, Wild life 100. Some so real, so real. Okay. You in your knees. I need something like you. Do you need someone like me? What's moving, everybody? Hey. You already know what time it is. It's story time. You feel me? I'm back with another crazy story. Crazy but true. You feel me? I've been getting a lot of requests for this story in particular. So, hey, I had to come drop it out for y'all. You know what I'm saying? Hope y'all enjoy it. But listen, um, if you if you've been clicking that button, if you've been liking, subscribing, sharing, commenting, and all that, listening to the music, I love you for life. You know what I'm saying? Y'all the real MVPs. You know what I mean? Straight up. Hey, but look, if you're new here, make sure you click that like button, comment, Sure, all that, you know what I'm saying? It's all love, you feel me? But listen, we're going to hop straight into the video, man. Now, y'all see the caption of this video. It's basically about the time my grandma got locked up for trapping. You know what I'm saying? She was a big trap star. <laughs> you feel me? Oh, that happened to be on the north side. Now, uh, it started a little further back, right? Um, When I was in about, it was like my eighth grade summer, right? Going into ninth grade. My mama, she ended up getting locked up. You know, I don't remember what she got locked up for. I think she got into a scuffle, you know, and it got bad. You know, she beat the person kind of bad. You feel what I'm saying? But I don't just remember 100%. So she ended up getting locked up. We didn't know how long she was going to be locked up. So uh, my aunt came and brought me in, basically. My aunt and my grandma. My aunt and my grandma, they had an apartment together um, along with my little cousin and all that like that. You feel me? So, um, I went and stayed with them for uh, the ending portion of the summer leading into high school. You feel me? So, uh, you know, me and my little cousin, we hanging a little more than ever and all that like that. You feel me? We getting ready to go to school together. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then, that's it's a lot of crazy stories too because look, this was partially my introduction to the north side. You know what I'm saying? Like Roswell type area. You feel me? Roswell. Georgia. If you're not from Atlanta, then y'all know Roswell is like a particularly good side of other city. You know, it used to be like Atlanta lines, but they changed Roswell, Sandy Springs, and all that to their own cities. You know what I'm saying? So uh, we start going to school together um, after the summertime, right? And mind you, I didn't never really have money. You know, like that, you know, when I, when I, cause I transitioned so much, you know, this was a new area. You feel me? I didn't, I didn't really know what was going on out here. I didn't know the ups, the downs, the this, that, you know, you know how it be when you move to a, a new area, you know? And if you watch my content, then you already know I done been, I went to like seven different high schools. You know what I'm saying? This just so happened to be one of the first high schools I've been to. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Like the first high school I went to literally the first. So, uh, <laughs> we got up there, and I'm noticing, you know, we on the north side, you feel me? It's a lot of rich kids that stay up here. They got all type of nice clothes, shoes. Uh, they got the newest CD players and MP3 players, iPods and all that. You know what I'm saying? iPhones and all that. You know what I'm talking about? Like, they was just pipe, you feel me? All, they, all them folks' uh, family had money for the most part, you know? So, um, me and my cousin, you know, because he wasn't really just having it like that either, but I ain't gonna count. His mama, my auntie, she made sure he stayed fresh. You know what I'm saying? She did what she could for me also, you know, but for the most part, you know, that was her son. So she made sure he was fresh. He always had the new Jordans, you know what I'm saying? He always had, you know, a couple of good outfits, you know, for when school started. You know, when, when we used to go school shopping back in the day, you know what I'm saying? We had a little budget or whatever. You know, our parents would give us a little budget. We'd go to Burlington, TJ Maxx, or something like that. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Y'all might want somewhere different. But when I was young, I used to go to Burlington, TJ Maxx, Ross, all that. You feel me? We looking for the deals. You know, I'm trying to get as much as I can for this $200. <laughs> Straight up. Y'all know how it used to be, man. 
Hey, so look, check it, right? So, um, basically, when I moved in with them, I was kind of on my own. You know what I'm saying? Don't get me wrong. My auntie, she took very good care of, you know, her family and even me. You know, she cooked almost every night. You know what I'm saying? She she made sure she went to work all the time. The bills paid, all of that. You feel me? But mind you, my aunt, not only was she staying here with my grandma, you know, my grandma and my aunt is living together, you know, her mom, but she also had, what, at the time, she also had like three kids at the time. You feel me? So it was like, you know, I really wasn't trying to take food out of their mouth. She she got a substantial amount of food stamps every month. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I wasn't really trying to take nothing out of their mouth, you know. And, you know, all that. You feel me? I was just trying to be thoughtful. You know what I'm saying? Especially coming from where I came from. Like, I, I grew up watching my mama struggle a lot, you know. So I kind of put that on other people, you know, and, and try not to make myself a burden in certain situations, you know. So... What me and my cousin decided to do was steal. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> we just decided to steal. You feel me? Uh, we It was a Walmart that was walking distance from his apartment, right? So we used to walk up to Walmart every other day. We Man, we, we stole out there Walmart so much, bro, that the employees just got used to us being there. You know what I'm saying? Not only did they get used to us being there, but they would ask us, hey, can you get this for me? You know what I'm saying? I'll pay you at the end of the shift or whatever like that. You feel me? We used to st we'll see we'll see a commercial, right, that come on for a new MP3 player or a new CD or a new this or a new that, and we'll go straight to Walmart the next day and just and boost it. You feel me? But uh, what was real lucrative at the time, right, we used to steal a whole bunch of blank CDs. We used to steal everything, but <laughs> in particular, that was really making the money. We used to steal a whole bunch of CDs, and um, we used to make mix CDs. We used to burn CDs, or, or we'll make whole albums. You feel me? We'll take a list down at school of the people that wanted a CD or something like that. You know what songs they wanted on it. Uh, if they wanted a whole album, whatever the case, and we'll go to the leasing office and burn all the CDs. You feel me? We'll steal hundred packs and burn all the CDs. That junk could take us all day for real. You know what I'm saying? But we'll go back to the school and sell them for like five, seven, ten dollars or something like that. You know what I mean? So y'all do the math. You feel me? Cause we were getting off like every day. New music was coming out all the time. You know what I'm saying? Somebody wanted a CD almost every day. You feel me? Sometimes they wanted. Uh, mp3 player sometimes they wanted a cd player sometimes they wanted whatever we could get our hands on you know we were just getting it off you feel me until um one day uh me and my cousin we went home we getting home from school or something like that and um i don't think i was there but the police ended up knocking on the door right now mind you and this wasn't even just the regular police. It was like the FBI or something. You know what I'm saying? It was it was some suited guys. You know what I mean? They had not not suited like like tuxedo, suited like bulletproof vests and you know attachments everywhere. You know what I'm saying? This type of situation it was. So um, I don't think I was there at the time. Matter of fact, I think I might have got on the bus and went somewhere else or something like that. I don't know. I don't remember 100. percent But I know I wasn't there when it happened. But look though, mind you, but before I even get to the police knocking on the door, our grandma, she used to leave at a specific time every single night, bro. Like, she used to leave, go somewhere every single night, and she'll come back with wise of cash, you feel me? And we knew she she had just came up because she'll show the money. If she ain't just show the money, then she will be in a particularly good mood. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Y'all know how it be when y'all get paid. You feel me? Straight up. So she was going somewhere and coming back paid. You feel me? And she she just so happened to have a little boyfriend that was staying with her in her room also, you know? Um, and, you know, they would go out ever so often and come back with money. You feel me? Sometimes he'll stay in and she'll go out, handle her business and come back with a whole bunch of cash. You feel me? I don't know. I still to this day, I don't know exactly where they were going to, you know, but I know they came back with it on them. You feel me? So, uh, uh, this particular day, right? When, uh, when the feds knocked on the door, they knocked and my auntie answered the door and, you know, they asked for my grandma. They like, is the such and such stay here? And, 
I don't remember what she said, but they already knew what was going on. You feel me? They wouldn't even came to the door if they didn't know what was going on. You feel me? So they had already had a warrant out for her arrest and everything. You know what I'm saying? Come to find out, these folk had been watching her for some time. Not only that, but the guy that she was dating was in on her getting caught up. You feel me? Crazy story. You know what I mean? That's why she he didn't go with her all the time when she was going to go do what she was doing. You feel me? So uh, they showed my auntie the, the, the warrant for, for her arrest. And they came in and, you know, they came in blazing. You feel me? They came in the house and snatched up. You feel me? I don't even think they really checked the spot because the only spot that was that my grandma occupied was her room you know what i'm saying like the the house was full of kids my uh my auntie her husband at the time she had three kids like i told you you know and and it was me and my my younger cousin you know we were the oldest you feel me besides the little kids we had our own room you know what i mean so i guess they felt like it didn't make sense to just search the whole house or just really going to depth with searching the spot you feel me so they left some rocks unturned <laughs> you know what i'm saying they took my grandma up you know they yanked her up they put her in the car and and this is my grandma fool like she like 55 60 years old or something like no nah, she was like she was like maybe early 50 back then you know what i'm saying so they yanked her up they um Put her in the back of the car. I don't know where her boyfriend was at the time. You know what I'm saying? He might have he might have got yanked up too. But he he not only did was he a part of her downfall, but he ended up snitching later. You know what I'm saying? And and you know, but that's a whole nother story. You feel me? So look, they uh picked her up and you know, she got shipped off. She ended up doing ten years. Like then almost to the dough. I think she got off at like eight or nine. You feel me? She did a she almost did a whole dime. You feel what I'm saying? But when they snatched her up, right? Me and my little cousin, you know, my little cousin, he he my age, but he just a little younger than me. You feel me? Like a couple months or like a month or two. You feel me? So me and my cousin, the oldest one, we went in her room. And when we went in her room, we realized how much how bad of a job the feds did shaking the spot you know what i'm saying because we might have looked under the bed in between the bed in the drawers and all that and now we just gathering stuff right we ended up with a an abundance of everything you feel me i'm talking about grandma had grandma had it in fool she had everything in there but straight up i'm talking about uh, um, everything. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, oh, we own now. You get what I'm saying? We own now. I'm telling my cousin, like, he like, you know how to sell this? I'm like, nah, but we finna figure it out. You know what I'm saying? We finna act like it, straight up. You know, cause um, before then, I wasn't exposed to nothing but marijuana. You know what I'm saying? That's what I pretty much knew how to push myself. You get what I'm saying? But um, finding all this, I just knew it was money in it, you know? So I didn't allow the, the chance to pass. So <laughs> we gathered up everything. Mind you, we had a, a good amount, you know what I'm saying? We gathered up everything. We put it in the room, and we decided to go to school with it the next day. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Straight up, we went to school. I, and look, it's crazy, right? Because I didn't even think about it in depth then, right? Or think about getting caught or anything like that. Because I went to school that next day with some of everything. I had a little bit of this, a little bit of this, and a little bit of that. You feel what I'm saying? It was no smell to none of it, you know? So I, I put them all in plastic bags. I put them in my pocket, in my book bag, or wherever I put them at the time. And, you know, I just went. Because I'm like, sure, we finna we finna see who want what. Forget it. You know, this the north side. You know, I know it's a whole bunch of... Um, privileged kids up here that 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 indulge you know i i figured that myself you know i wasn't 100 percent sure because i was new out here but you know just thinking i thought i, I felt like it would have been you know what i'm saying so uh me and my cousin we went to school he took a couple of, of what he had now nah, he took like one thing i took like three different things and mind you 
This school, Roswell, I went to Roswell High School at this time. It only lasted maybe about six months or something, if that. You feel me? But I'm going to Roswell High School. They ain't never seen nothing like this before. You feel me? Nobody was at school selling drugs or anything of that nature. You know, like Roswell High School was a real, real put together type school. It was like high school musical almost. You know what I'm saying? Like it was, it was all different type of ethnicities there. It was, it was just, it was just like that. You know what I'm saying? It was just the, um, the idea of a white school. That's that was Roswell High School. You know. So look, my cousin, he ended up taking, you know. Just one drug. I think he just had, you know what I'm saying, something like that. I took about three different ones, you know what I mean? Because I didn't know what I was going to run into, you feel me? So, uh, I just wanted to be prepared, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, we got to school. First period hit. So, my cousin, he come rushing down the highway, you feel me? He ain't just frantic, but he trying to find me, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, he run all the way to the other end of the, of the school uh, where, mm, I think, his locker was because I had a class down there at the time, right? By the bathroom or the gym or something like that. You feel me? So uh, he get down there and, and he like, hey, bro, I got one. You know what I'm saying? I got one, but I ain't got no more. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, all right, bet who it is. You know what I'm saying? He like, um, I'm going to set the play up for uh for before lunchtime or something like that. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, all right, cool. So we both went to class. And the bell ring for lunch. So right before we go to lunch, we meet up with this little white boy, you know. And um, the crazy part is, right, my cousin was telling me this this same little white boy, he was, he was like the star basketball player uh, in eighth grade or something like that. You feel me? He had a real promising future. You know, I guess he just got caught up on drugs or something like that, you know, during the summer. You feel me? It's crazy how summer can change somebody's life, you know what I mean? But uh, he come to me, and he like, hey, uh, what you got? And I'm like, I got this, this, and that, you feel me? The boy wanted to so it's like, so I'm like, all right, bet, fool. Uh, so uh, he like, look, I got, I think he might have had $50 that first day or something like that. You know, and I'm looking at that like, oh, wow, okay. He just telling me he got $50. He's not telling me like, um, you know, I need this for that, you know, or anything like that. Mind you, because remember I told y'all, I don't even know how to sell this stuff. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, all right, bet. Follow me to the bathroom, right? So we going to the bathroom, no, no lie, bro, no cap. I don't know if my cousin just told a whole bunch of people. You know, trying to put it out there or what the case. But as I'm walking to the bathroom with the junkie, you know, he, it's 10, 15 other people following us. You know what I'm saying? Not only is they following us, but as we making our way closer to the bathroom, it's like I, I hear people whispering on side of me and like they know what's going on. You get what I'm saying? Like, cause, I mean, fair enough. They probably didn't expect me to be hanging with, you know, somebody who just became a junkie either, you know what I mean? So that was probably a giveaway also, but I really think my cousin, you know, he was trying to put it out there, so he ended up telling more people than he probably should have told. <laughs> he told more people than he was probably supposed to tell, you feel what I'm saying? So um, we get down there to the bathroom, and it's packed outside the bathroom. I'm having to tell folks, like, listen, fool, like, like, Y'all can't come with us in here. You feel me? Like we really sectioned the bathroom off, you know. So it was just me, my cousin, um, and the junkie. You know what I'm saying? So we go inside the stall, man. He like, can I try it first? I'm like, yeah, you can try it, but that's going that's going into what you buying. You feel me? I knew that much. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Plus, you know, I wasn't trying to, I wasn't trying to, I'm trying to make all the money. You feel what I'm saying? Mind you, I told y'all, I ain't really just having nothing right now. You feel me? My mama locked up. I need whatever I can get at this point. So he like, all right, bet. He was just so excited to just get a little piece. So, man, I gave him a little piece of dog. And he went in the bathroom stall, crushed it up. And I'm talking about hard. You know what I'm saying? Like, he just crushed. He crushed up the fool. it up. And was like, oh my God, like, 
he just started tripping in the bathroom, you know, in the stall. You know, he ain't just trip crazy, but he just started tweaking like, like, oh, this is this is great. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is great. This is the best stuff I ever had. And I'm like, dang, grandma, grandma had that straight drop. You feel me? Like, you know, she, she was doing her thing. You feel me? I don't know where she was getting it from. I don't know what, but everything was solid. You know what I'm saying? Everything came back like great. You feel me? Whatever we had at that moment, it came back raw. You know what I'm saying? Like, we had no complaints. You feel me? So, uh, uh, he, after that, he just became a loyal customer. You know what I'm saying? He just became a loyal customer. And, um, all his little friends, that was Jay, that, you feel me? They all started coming to me and my cousin throughout the day. My cousin, I think, he, he sold out pretty early. I think he was giving more than he was supposed to be giving or something like that. But man, I made that junk last until I moved on everything, fool. I, like I told y'all, I only, I only stayed at the school for like six months at the most. You feel me? This was like my introduction in ninth grade, you feel me? So uh, yeah, every day that just became that type of situation until, you know, um, I told him, you know, like, hey, look, this how we finna do this from now on. Y'all tell me, because it started getting hot on everything. I don't know what made people think they can get away with certain stuff, but folks start bringing bags to school. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about pounds. You feel me? And putting them in their locker. You know, so it started really just getting hot. You feel me? So I felt like it was only a matter of time before... They ran down on us because we the one that started this whole situation, you know. We the one that made it comfortable for folks to bring stuff to school, you know what I mean? So, um, <laughs> I told all the all my clientele, I'm like, listen, y'all let me know what y'all want a day before and I'm going to bring that, you feel me? We're going to make the situation before school starts because so, I don't want nothing on me. Y'all take y'all little drugs at the beginning of the day. You know, and I don't want to care. I don't want to be carrying nothing around. You feel me? Because at first I was just carrying. I'm carrying around all these hard drugs in my pocket, literally. You know, every day, my ninth grade year. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, it came time where I ended up leaving the school. Right? I left when I and when I left the school, I moved to a, another side of town, and I still had a a, a sizable amount. To sell, you know what I'm saying? I just took it everywhere I went, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna count to you, you feel me? Matter of fact, when I moved from Roswell, this is when I actually moved to Exit 6 off Sandy Springs, you know what I'm saying? My mama, she tried to stay in that area, you feel me? Because she felt like it was a good area after she got out of jail and things like that, you know? But that's actually, if you watch my content, that's actually when we moved into the trap, you know what I'm saying? We moved into the trap and got into even more stuff. You know, it was Crips everywhere. We moved into the, into a trap house. You know, we thinking that this area was just a good area. You feel me? But like I told y'all, it's hoods everywhere. But um, soon after I left, man, they started bringing the dogs. My cousin was telling me they started bringing the dogs to the school. You know, they caught a couple people with pounds in their locker. You know, all type of stuff. You feel me? So I really just made it out. By the skin of my teeth, you feel what I'm saying? <laughs> but look, I made it out. I took all my stuff with me, and it was on to the next trap. You feel what I'm saying? But um, yeah, that's my situation with my grandma getting locked up. You know what I mean? When she got locked up, we went in her room and we found everything. You know what I'm saying? And and, and that was the beginning of my career. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? As a trapper, you feel me? So look, no. But um, for those of y'all who 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 want to know. My grandma, she just got out um, a couple years ago. You know what I'm saying? She she doing good. You know, she got a job. You feel me? I think, you know, her being in prison did for so long, it did affect her in certain ways. So she's still kind of, you know, getting acclimated to real life and things like that. But for the most part, she made it up out of the gangster granny. You know what I'm saying? She made it up out that jam. You feel me? She done got a job. She on probation or well, parole and all that like that. And, you know, everything just good. You feel me? But, that's my story, man. You know what I'm saying? I hope y'all enjoyed it. You know, that's the time when my grandma got locked up. And we became trappers. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We followed in granny footsteps. You know what I mean? <laughs> but look, man. Y'all make sure y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments. You know, like, share, subscribe. 
Make sure y'all go listen to the music and all that. And um, hey man, do y'all like my intro? You feel me? I whipped the intro up myself. You know what I'm saying? That's my song beat. That's one of my songs beat beat that I'm pushing right now. You know, if you rock with the intro, let me know in the comments. And um, until next time, one hundred.